Welcome back. Now that we've completed the header section and the expenses section, we can move on to the chart. We'll add our chart by creating a new section. We'll start off with a section. We'll give the section some styling. Again, we'll add some padding top and bottom of PY6 and we'll add a header. We'll just call it stats. Let's add some styling to the header. I think text 2XL should do. Yeah, looks great. I have noticed that we've been getting these errors in the console. I think it's because of my naming convention. So let's just fix that up quick. Should be using camel case for these components. So I'll just rename the component and I'll change the I to an uppercase. Enter. You can now see that error is gone. I highly recommend checking out the documentation for more details, especially on the different parameters that you can pass into it. To get started, we need to install the Chart.js package for React. I'll stop the development server. In the console, we can type in npm install. You can just use i and we'll install React chart.js dash 2 we can also add chart.js and press enter after the installation is complete we can run our development server again right so we can get started with chart.js by importing a couple of things at the top of our page file firstly from chart.js we'll import chart as chart.js arc element tooltip and legend lastly I'll also import some things from react chart.js and we'll import donut just in case you were wondering where I found these imports from, you can actually get them from the official documentation for React Jar.js. I'll link to it in the description as well. But on the very main page, you can see these imports. What we'll also do is register the chart exactly like how they're explaining it here. So in our code, just below the imports, we'll paste in that line of code and I'll save. After saving, you will notice this error message. And this is something you'll run into all the time with Next13. The difference between Next13 and previous versions is that Next13 is server-side rendered or server components out of the box. All the logic we've built here is treated as if it's being rendered and run on the server. So certain client-side logic is not available on the server side. So whenever we use any React components that are supposed to run on the client only, those components will fail. But fortunately, there is a way to tell Next.js that this is a client-side component. We can do that by adding the following at the top of our page. So at the top of page.js, we can just say use client. And that resolves those issues. So just keep in mind, so keep in mind whenever you use any React hooks like use effect, use state, etc., you might get that error message. And when that happens, just add use client at the top of your code. We can now create our chart based on the dummy data that we've created. We can add our donut chart by adding this component to our code. Below the header, I'll just create a wrapper div and I'll add in the donut component over here. The donut component expects us to pass it a property called data. This data property expects a object. The first value that it expects is called labels. Labels represents the titles for each of these slices. So it's these things here. So this will be an array of values. As an example, fill, entertainment, etc. But instead of hard coding these values, we'll dynamically build an array by mapping through the dummy data. So we can just say dummy data map expecting to receive an expense and what we'd like to return is the expense 
dot title. We need to specify the data sets. This is an array of objects. Each one of these objects has a label. I'll just call it expenses. For the data, we need to specify a list of amounts. These represent these numeric values for each of the slices. As an example, 500, 200, etc. Again, we'll just map through the dummy data to create this array. We expect to receive expenses. And for each expense, we'll return the amount. We also need to specify a list of background colors. We'll map through the dummy data again to get these. Expense, and for each expense, we'll return the color. Then we can also specify a border color. It's actually possible to specify a list of colors. So it means that for each of these slices, you can see the little border here. So each of these slices could have its own unique border color. But for this demo, I'll just specify a single color for all of these slices. And lastly, we can specify the border width. I'll just make it five. I've got a typo here, so I'll just fix that up. Let's save. Great, we can see our slices pulling through with the different amounts and the colors. At the moment, our pie chart is quite massive. We do want to shrink it down a bit and center it in the page. To do this, I'll add some styling to the wrapper div for the chart. We'll add a width of one over two, so that's half the available width. And we'll add a margin X of auto just to center the chart in the page. That looks much better. So before we close off this video, there is one other change that I do want to make. In our dummy data, we've been referring to this field as amount. I do want to change the name to something that's a bit more realistic for what we're building. In the final version of this project, this amount actually represents the total value of all the expense items captured against it. So instead of just calling it amount, I do want to rename it to total. We also need to update all references to this total field. The reference on the expense category item component needs to be needs to be updated. So we'll change it from amount to total, expense.total. And on the donut chart, we need to change it from expense amount to expense.total. We also need to make a change to the expense category item component file. So in the props, we'll rename it from amount and we'll change it to total. And we'll change the value here. Finally, I do want to add some spacing between the chart icon and the sign out button. We can change that by going to our navigation file and then scrolling down to the right side of the navigation. I think this gap of two might be too small. Let's try changing it to gap four. Yeah, looks better to me. I think that's enough for this video. So far, we've done a lot of work. We've created the basic styling of our application. We've created reusable styles for buttons. We also created reusable components for our expense items. In the next video, we'll start working on these modals that show up when you click on add expense, add income, and displaying expense item get. I'll see you there. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.